With Christmas near and kids in bed, the time has come to rest your head. So close your eyes and listen well for a festive story I will tell. This tale before you of Peggy the Pug is filled with adventure and a dash of love. Chapter 1 Peggy the Pug's flat black nose twitched as she napped on the sofa as carols played softly on the radio and the spicy scent of gingerbread wafted from the kitchen. Peggy dreamed about Christmas. It was her favourite time of year because it was in December last year that she'd found her home. The sound of the front door opening jolted Peggy awake. We're home, cried a voice from the hallway followed by a thud of backpacks dropping on the floor. Chloe, thought Peggy, scrambling to her feet, Carly little tail wagging. She raced out to the hallway as fast as her short legs could carry her. Hi Peggy, cried Chloe, a dark haired girl wrapped up in a coat and woolly scarf. She crouched down on the floor to stroke Peggy's tan coloured fur. I miss you so much when you're at school, Peggy told her best friend. Of course, to Chloe, it just sounded like barking, but Peggy covered her face with kisses, so she understood. Let me pat Peggy too, said Chloe's little sister, Ruby. She was clutching a paper snowman decorated with cotton wool balls. Kneeling down next to Chloe, she patted Peggy on the head. Slurp! Peggy licked Ruby's hands affectionately, catching a faint taste of glue. Chloe was Peggy's best friend. But she loved the rest of the family too, and missed them all when they weren't at home. This autumn, there had been a lot of changes in the Jackson family. Ruby had started going to the nursery at Chloe's school. Finn was at high school now, and Mum had opened her very own cafe. Dad worked from home sometimes, like today, but mostly, Peggy was at home on her own. How was school, girls? said Dad, coming out of the kitchen with a smudge of flour on his nose. Okay, said Chloe, shrugging her coat off and hanging it on the peg. Hmm, thought Peggy, cocking her head to the side and studying her friend. That's strange. Normally, Chloe chattered about the fun things she'd learned at school and the games she'd played at break time with her friends. Bad, said Ruby. Miss Roberts is horrible and scary. She's a meanie. Of course she isn't, laughed Dad. She has a loud, scary voice and she likes to tell children off, insisted Ruby. Chloe unzipped her little sister's coat and helped her hang it up. I thought Miss Roberts was a bit scary when I started nursery, but actually she's very kind and a really good teacher. That's right, said Dad, nodding. It took Chloe a while to settle in at nursery too, but once she made friends with Ellie, she was very happy there. The smile faded from Chloe's face, like a cloud covering up the sun. What's wrong, Peggy? Let's go and hang your snowman up, said Dad. Peggy and the girls followed him onto the ki- into the kitchen, where he pinned Ruby's snowman up next to an advent calendar. Trays of gingerbread biscuits shaped like stars, reindeer and Christmas trees were cooling on the kitchen counter. Mmm, said Chloe. Those smell good, Dad. Can we have some for a snack? Yes, but only one each, said Dad. They're for the bake sale at the school, Christmas fair tomorrow. Peggy's big brown eyes stared up at Chloe pleadingly as she munched her gingerbread. Please, 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 her eyes begged, just a teeny weeny bit. You know I can't resist you, Peggy, said Chloe, snapping a piece off her biscuit and giving it to Peggy. Result, Peggy wolfed down the gingerbread. Want to watch Sparkalina, Ruby, asked her sister, heading into the living room and switching on the television. Peggy trotted after them and sat down happily in front of the TV. A beautiful cartoon unicorn flew across the screen, singing the show's theme tune. But Chloe shook her head. Not in the mood, she said, trudging upstairs. Now Peggy was sure there was something wrong. Sparkalina was Chloe's favourite television programme. If she didn't want to watch it, something must be worrying her. Peggy climbed up the stairs. Chloe's bedroom door was shut, but Peggy could hear muffled sounds coming from inside. 
Nudging the door open with her paw, Peggy saw Chloe curled up in her bed, sobbing into her pillow. She clambered up in the bed and nestled against Chloe. Today was such a bad day, sobbed Chloe, burying her face in Peggy's fur. Ellie doesn't want to be my friend anymore. There's a new girl named Hannah in my class, and now the two of them are doing everything together. They sat together at lunchtime and picked each other for partners in PE. Peggy licked the salty tears off Chloe's cheek. She hated to see her so upset. I feel so left out, wailed Chloe, hugging Peggy tight. Christmas is going to be so rubbish if I can't do fun things with Ellie. You've got me, thought Peggy. I'll always be here for you. Last Christmas, Chloe's family had taken Peggy home from a dog shelter. It was meant to be just for a week, but because of her special friendship with Chloe, it had become Peggy's forever home. Peggy owed everything to Chloe, and she would do anything to make her happy. Sniffling, Chloe wiped away her tears and sighed. Thanks, Peggy, she said, planting a kiss on the pug's wrinkly head. I feel a bit better now. As Chloe started doing her maths homework, Peggy heard a commotion coming from downstairs and went to investigate. Finn, Chloe's teenage brother, was in the kitchen with his friend Zach, eating gingerbread biscuits. The boys were in a band together called Avocado Toast. At least Peggy thought that's what it was called now. They had also been called Velvet Spaceship, the Hammerhead Sharks and Gandalf's Beard. The band seemed to change its name on a weekly basis. We've had this gig booked for weeks, said Finn, playing at the school Christmas fair is a big deal for the band. You can't let us down. I'm sorry, man, said Zach, shrugging. I can't do it. I'm training for a charity race. Ten kilometres is a long way to run, and I've only got a week to get ready. If you don't play the gig, you're out of the band, said Finn angrily. Fine, shouted Zach. Then I quit. He grabbed his guitar case and stormed out of the house. What's all this shouting? said Dad, coming into the kitchen holding his laptop. He stared at the crumbs on the now empty cooling racks. And who's eating all the gingerbread? Sorry, Dad, said Finn. I was hungry. Great, said Dad, looking cross. I don't have time to make any more. I've got to finish this presentation for work. Now what am I going to bring to the school fair? A short while later, Mum came home from the cafe, dropping a bag of food containers on the kitchen table. Dinner time, she called up the stairs. As they all sat around the table, Mum unpacked the plastic containers of sandwiches, sausage rolls and salads. Leftovers from the cafe again, complained Finn. Business still slow, Dad asked Mum. Mum nodded, looking worried. I barely had any customers today. Chloe picked up her food, listlessly. Even though she usually loved sausage rolls. She's still upset about Ellie, thought Peggy. I'm sure business will pick up, said Dad, once word gets around and people taste your delicious food. I hope so, said Mum, gloomily. Otherwise I won't be able to repay the bank loan. Mummy, said Ruby, for Christmas can I have a scooter? Oh, and a new teacher. Christmas, Mum groaned, burying her head in her hands. As if we didn't have enough to worry about already, I can't believe it's only two weeks away. Peggy looked from one member of her family to another. Christmas was supposed to be the happiest time of the year. Why did everyone look so sad and worried? Chapter 2 Can we go to the Christmas fair now, Daddy? asked Chloe the next morning. I've finished my homework. Not yet, said Dad, who was hoovering the living room. I want to see the reindeer, whined Ruby. Chloe and Ruby had been excited about their school fair for weeks. As well as lots of fun Christmas crafts and stalls to buy presents, there was going to be a real live reindeer. When Dad had finished his chores, he and the girls put on their coats. Take me too, whimpered Peggy. Mum was at the cafe and Finn had already gone to the fair to set up his drum kit. Peggy didn't want to be stuck at home on her own. Can we take Peggy, Dad? asked Chloe. That's not a bad idea, said Dad. She could use a walk. Hooray, thought Peggy, as Chloe clipped her on their lead. We need to stop at Mum's cafe on the way and pick up some treats for the cake stall, said Dad. 
Walking briskly, because it was cold, they headed into the town centre and stopped outside a small cafe with a sign that said Tasty Treats. Dad pushed the door open and they all stepped into the warmth. Looking around, Peggy saw a glass display cabinet filled with a mouth-watering display of cakes, pastries and sandwich fillings. There was a bright red poinsettia on every table and garlands of gold tinsel decorated the walls. This is lovely, thought Peggy. But Mum, who was wiping down the counter, didn't look very cheerful. Oh dear, said Dad. Is it still slow? Mum nodded gloomily. I've only had two customers this morning. Everyone's probably doing Christmas shopping, said Chloe. They'll come later on. I hope so, said Mum. Reaching underneath the counter, she pulled out a box and handed it to Dad. Here are some mince pies for the school fate. Sighing, she added, it's not as if I'll be needing them at this rate. They left the cafe and Peggy trotted by Chloe's side as they walked to the primary school. Oh wow, said Chloe as they entered the school hall. It's been transformed into a winter wonderland with snowflake decorations hanging down from the ceiling. Children shrieked excitedly spending their pocket money on sweets, face painting and the second hand toy stall while their parents sipped mulled wine and chatted. The school choir was singing carols on the stage as Finn and his band mate Jasmine set up their instruments. Can we go outside and see the reindeer? asked Chloe. Sure, said Dad. I'm going to drop the mince pies off at the cake stall. Holding Peggy's lead, Chloe guided Ruby through the crowded hall and out to the playground. A pen had been set up on the playing fields and inside it, two big animals were nibbling the grass. Reindeer! cried Ruby, running over to the pen. Chloe joined the children clustered around the fence. Peggy stuck her head through the railings and peered up at the reindeer. Their thick shaggy fur was light brown and they had velvety antlers. Holly is a smaller one, explained the reindeer handler, and Noel, or Noel, is the one with bigger antlers. Peggy gasped at the reindeer. She thought they were beautiful. It's rude to stare, said Noel. Sorry, said Peggy. I just love your antlers. Why, thank you, said Noel. They are looking rather impressive this year. I like your curly tail, said Holly. The reindeer handler gave Chloe and Ruby some slices of carrot and the girls offered them to the reindeer on their palms. Oh, carrots again, sighed Noel. I really fancied mushrooms or some Brussels sprouts. That tickles, giggled Chloe as Holly's soft lips nuzzled her hands to gobble up the carrot. Reindeer come from the North Pole, the reindeer handler informed the children. Don't they get cold? asked Ruby. Their fur keeps them warm, said the reindeer handler, and they have specially shaped hooves to help them walk in the snow. Peggy peered at the reindeer curiously. Where are your wings? she asked them. She wondered if they were tucked up against their sides. Uh, what wings? asked Holly, confused. I thought reindeer could fly, said Peggy. Chloe had told her stories about Rudolph and all the other reindeer flying Santa's sleigh through the sky on Christmas Eve. Noel snorted with laughter, but Peggy didn't understand what was so funny. We don't need wings, said Holly kindly, because we're magic. She winked at Noel. Oh, said Peggy, feeling a bit silly. Have you ever met Santa Claus? No, said Noel, but we did meet Comet and Cupid once. Comet was really nice, said Holly, munching a carrot slice, but Cupid was a bit of a show-off. Oh, you're just jealous because she complimented my antlers, said Noel. Peggy had lots more questions she wanted to ask the reindeer, but Chloe tugged gently on her lead. We've got to go back inside, she told Ruby. Finn's band is playing now. Back in the hall, a crowd had formed around the stage. Chloe picked Peggy up so she could see better. We're avocado toast, Finn shouted into the microphone. Are you ready to rock? The crowd whooped in reply. Peggy barked and wagged her tail. Finn clicked his drumsticks together three times to count Jasmine in, and a one, and a two, and a... Finn pounded his drums as Jasmine played the keyboards and sang. But without Zach on guitar, they sounded terrible. Ouch, thought Peggy. Her ears hurt from the terrible racket.
Boo! called the audience. <clears throat> oh no, muttered Chloe. At first Peggy thought she was talking about Finn's band and then she followed Chloe's gaze. She was staring at two girls in matching Christmas jumpers. Peggy recognised Chloe's friends, Ellie. But who was the other girl? Ellie's with Hannah again, Chloe whispered into Peggy's ear. I've got to get out of here. I can't face seeing them together. She handed Peggy's lead to Ruby and slipped away, looking upset. Peggy longed to go after her friend, but she knew Chloe wanted to stay and look after Ruby. As the boos from the audience got louder, Finn's band stopped playing. Poor Finn, thought Peggy, watching him pack up his drum kit, his cheeks flaming with embarrassment. Suddenly, Ruby tugged on Peggy's lead. Come on, Peggy, we've got to go, now! Peggy's paws nearly got trodden on several times as Ruby hurried through the crowd to the soft toy stall, a table piled high with second-hand cuddly toys. Any animal you want for a pound, sweetie, the lady running the stall told Ruby. Instead, Ruby dived under the table. We've got to hide in here, Ruby whispered to Peggy, because I saw Miss Roberts. She peeped out nervously, checking to see if her teacher had gone, then ducked back in. She's still out there. Peggy snuggled up to Ruby. I might as well make myself comfortable, she thought. Who knew how long they'd be hiding for? A little boy came over to the soft toy table. He looked around at all of the toys, trying to make up his mind. How about this purple hippo, said the stall holder, or a fluffy duck? No, said the boy, I want a doggy. Good choice, thought Peggy, letting out a yip of approval. The boy crouched down and peered under the table. His eyes landed on Peggy and widened. I want this one, he said, picking Peggy up. Hey, thought Peggy, her little legs flailing. I'm not a toy. That's my dog, said Ruby, trying to snatch Peggy away from the boy. I saw her first, cried the boy, refusing to let go. Soon Ruby, the little boy, and Peggy were all howling. Peggy, cried Chloe, running over. Peggy wriggled out of the boy's arms and ran to her friend, barking with relief. She'd never been so happy to see anyone. Chloe quickly explained the situation to the little boy's mum. The lady running the stall found a toy pug for him. He was still sniffling, but when his mum said, let's go and get a mince pie from the cake stall, Archie. I hear they're delicious, he soon cheered up. Can we go home now, Chloe? Ruby asked. Chloe sighed. Good idea. They found Dad and helped Finn pack up his drum kit. Then they all trudged home miserably. Oh dear, Peggy thought. Even the Christmas fair hadn't managed to cheer the family up. That night, Peggy tossed and turned on Chloe's bed, but it wasn't because of the strong winds blowing outside. She couldn't fall asleep because she was worried. Chloe had been so unhappy after the school fair, and even cuddles from Peggy hadn't cheered her up. What can I do to help? wondered Peggy as she lay awake next to Chloe thinking about the fair. Peggy remembered what Holly and Noel had told her about reindeer being magic. If she were magic too, she could make Chloe and her family happy for Christmas. That's it! Peggy thought, sitting up in bed, her whiskers quivering with excitement. I'll become a reindeer! Snuggling up against Chloe again, Peggy wondered if she'd still be able to sleep on a friend's bed when she was a reindeer. I'll probably be too big, she realised. That made her feel a bit sad, but it was a sacrifice Peggy was willing to make to become magic. It was the best way she could think of to help the person she loved the most in the world. Relieved that she had a plan, Peggy finally fell fast asleep. The next morning, Peggy stared at her reflection in the mirror on the back of Chloe's wardrobe door. Her tan fur was almost the same colour as the reindeer's, but that was where the similarities ended. Peggy frowned, making her forehead even more wrinkled. I need antlers, she thought. She headed downstairs for breakfast. Chloe, Ruby and Finn were already in the kitchen eating pancakes. Do you want to invite Ellie over to play this afternoon? Mum asked Chloe. No, Chloe shook her head. 
When Mum looked at her curiously, Chloe added, She's, um, busy. Then you can all help me with the chores, announced Dad. The children groaned, but Dad said, There was a storm last night, so I need you kids to rake up the debris. After breakfast, Peggy followed the children out into the garden. The lawn was strewn with leaves and twigs that had blown down in the gales overnight. A big striped ginger cat was sitting on top of the garden fence. Hi Tiger, Peggy called up to him. Tiger just narrowed his green eyes and sniffed in a superior manner. When she'd first come to live with Chloe, <coughs> Peggy had hoped she'd make friends with the neighbour's cat. <coughs> <clears throat> but Tig Tiger wasn't very friendly. The only reason he came into her garden was to poo behind the bushes. Finn and Chloe started raking up the leaves, while Ruby gathered twigs and sticks to put them in a pile. Oh, thought Peggy, these look like antlers. She dragged a twig off of the pile. No, Peggy, said Ruby, I can't play fetch with you right now. She pulled the twig out of Peggy's mouth and put it back in the pile. When Ruby's back was turned, Peggy tried again, dragging another twig off the pile. How can I get this on? She, prod she wondered, prodding the sticks with her head. What are you doing, pigtail? sneered Tiger, looking down at her. Peggy ignored the cat. She was determined to attach her antlers somehow. Naughty Peggy, said Ruby crossly. She tried to yank the stick away, but Peggy bit down, unwilling to let go of it. Drop, ordered Ruby. No, thought Peggy. Finally, with one strong tug, Ruby yanked the stick out of Peggy's mouth. Peggy flew back and fell, plop, into a huge pile of leaves Finn and Chloe had raked up. Leaves flew up into the air and scattered around the garden. As she shook off the leaves, Peggy ignored the sound of Tiger's mocking laughter. Ah, oh, great, grumbled Finn. Now we have to rake everything up again. I'll put Peggy inside, said Chloe, so she doesn't get in the way. Chloe carried Peggy into the kitchen and shut the door behind her. Slam. Oh dear, now Chloe was cross with her and Peggy was still no closer to becoming a reindeer. The next day, Peggy was home alone. Mum and Dad were at work and the children were at school. Peggy felt bored and lonely. She'd spent the whole morning trying to think of a way to become a reindeer, but hadn't had any ideas. When she wandered into the kitchen for a drink of water, her eyes fell on the vegetable rack. Aha, she thought, spotting a bunch of carrots. Noelle and Holly had eaten carrots at the Christmas fair. Maybe if I eat enough carrots, I'll turn into a reindeer. It was definitely worth a try. She worked the carrots out of the rack with her paws, Crunch, crunch, crunch. They weren't her favourite food, or even her secret second favourite, but Peggy munched carrot after carrot until every single one was gone. I'll take a nap, thought Peggy. Hopefully when I wake up, I'll be a reindeer. Groan. We're home, called Chloe. Peggy staggered to her feet, her belly charmed and her head felt dizzy. I must be transforming into a reindeer, she told herself. She stumbled into the hallway to greet Chloe and blah! Peggy threw up all over the floor. Ew, said Ruby, holding her nose. Looks like Peggy got into the carrots, sighed Dad, looking down at the orange puddle. Oh, you poor little thing, cried Chloe, picking Peggy up. Wait a minute, thought Peggy. Reindeer were big. If Chloe could still pick her up, it meant her plan hadn't worked. Despite eating a whole bunch of carrots, she was still a pug. Peggy whimpered, whimpered, feeling terrible. Don't worry, Peg, said Chloe, stroking her head. I'll take care of you. As Dad cleaned up the mess, Chloe gave Peggy some water and took her upstairs. She held Peggy on her lap, stroking her back. I had a bad day too, Chloe whispered. I heard Ellie and Hannah talking about how much fun they had at the school fair. She sighed sadly. I was really looking forward to doing fun stuff with Ellie over the Christmas holidays, but now she only wants to hang out with Hannah. Now it wasn't just Peggy's tummy that hurt, her heart ached too. 
I have to find a way to become a reindeer, she thought. I need magic to make Chloe happy again. Peggy's tummy felt much better the next day, but she still hadn't found a way to become a reindeer. After school, Chloe and Ruby were making Christmas cards in the kitchen. Peggy sat by the table watching them paint. Is that a card for Ellie? asked Ruby, dipping her paintbrush in yellow paint. Chloe shook her head. We're not friends anymore, she told her sister sadly. It's for my teacher. Ruby wrinkled her nose as she painted a gold star. I'm not making a card for Miss Roberts. She's a horrible meanie. Chloe laughed. She's not horrible. She's just a bit strict. Ruby peered at Chloe's painting of Santa in his sleigh. Why does that reindeer have a red nose? Duh, said Chloe. It's Rudolph. He's Santa's most magical reindeer. Peggy's ears perked up with interest. Hmm, she thought. Maybe if I had a red nose, I'd be as magical as Rudolph. She watched Chloe dab red paint on the jolly looking Santa. Suddenly, she knew what to do. Leaping up on the table, Peggy knocked the yellow and green paint on the floor as she buried her nose in the pot of red paint. Hey! cried Chloe, what are you doing? Peggy looked up, dripping red paint all over the girl's cards. Am I a reindeer now? she wondered hopefully. She glanced at her reflection in the oven door. A pug with paint all over her furry face stared back at her. My cards, wailed Ruby. Peggy ruined my Christmas cards. Dad ran into the kitchen. What a mess, he groaned, looking at the paint splattered floor. Sighing, he went to fetch a mop. Come on, Peggy, said Chloe, scooping her up. Let's go and get you clean. Looking over Chloe's shoulder as they headed towards the bathroom, Peggy stared down at the cards that she'd spoiled. She'd made a mess of everything, again. There were less than two weeks until Christmas and Peggy still hadn't made her family happy. It was time to face the facts. She needed a new plan, fast. Peggy woke up bright and early the next morning. The school run was always one of her favourite parts of the day. She loved trotting alongside Dad and the girls, sniffing the pavement and chatting to other dogs. But today, she was even more excited than usual, because she had come up with a brilliant new plan. If Peggy couldn't become a reindeer herself, she'd just have to find Santa and ask him to help. But first, she needed to talk to Holly and Noel. They'd met Comet and Cupid, so they'd n they might know how Peggy could find Santa. Hoping that the reindeer would still be at Chloe's school so they could sneak in and ask them, Peggy bounded downstairs. She was too excited to eat breakfast, but nobody else was in a very good mood. What the heck, said Finn, sounding cross. There's paint on my school shoes. Oops, thought Peggy. Finn checked his phone, then shoved it angrily back into his blazer pocket. Nobody's replied to my advert for a new guitarist yet. The post plopped through the letterbox. Mum picked up the envelopes and groaned. Look at all these bills. Where's Ruby? asked Dad. He called up the stairs. Ruby, it's time for breakfast. A few minutes later, there was still no sign of Ruby. Ruby, bellowed Dad. Come down or you'll be late for nursery. I've got to go, said Mum. I can't be late opening the cafe. I'll walk with you, said Finn, slinging his school bag over his shoulder, since I'm not talking to Zack. Peggy helped Chloe and Dad search for Ruby. They looked under the dining room table, in the laundry hamper, and behind the living room curtains. There was no sign of her downstairs, so they went upstairs, calling her name. She'd better not make me late for school, grumbled Chloe, checking behind the shower curtain. My class is going to the pantomime today, then she muttered but it probably won't be any fun because Ellie and Hannah have already bags he'd sitting together. Normally Peggy loved playing hide and seek, but today she was impatient to get to school, so she followed her nose. She's here, barked Peggy, discovering Ruby hiding under her parents' bed. Out you come, Dad ordered Ruby. I don't want to go to school, wailed Ruby, as Dad picked her up and carried her downstairs. I don't like Miss Roberts! 
As Dad ushered Chloe and Ruby out of the house, Peggy tried to follow them. Sorry Peg, we're running late so I'm driving the girls to school today. He put Peggy in the garden and shut the gate. No, yelped Peggy. She gazed around the garden in dismay. I need to talk to the reindeer, I have to get out of here. Peggy tried to open the gate with her paws. She pushed and pushed with all her might, but the gate didn't budge. She heard someone sniggering behind her. Peggy whirled around and saw Tiger strutting along the fence. Going somewhere, Pigtail? Peggy ignored the cat and batted the gate with her paws again, feeling desperate. Tiger looked amused. That's never going to work, he said. Why don't you just jump? The cat crouched on his haunches and leapt down, landing nimbly on the ground. Tiger, you're a genius, exclaimed Peggy. Yes, I know, said the cat, cleaning his whiskers with his paws. Peggy backed up and started running towards the fence. Here goes, she thought, leaping into the air. Boink! She crashed right into the fence. Ouch! Peggy groaned, her head throbbing. That's got to hurt. Tiger said, his green eyes glittering mischievously. Maybe you should try to climb over. Watch. He scrambled up over the garden fence, his sharp claws clinging to the wood. Your turn, he called down. Peggy tried to copy what the cat had done, jumping up. She pawed at the fence but her claws weren't sharp enough to get a grip on the wood. Oof! She fell back on her bottom. This is useless, she sighed. I'm stuck here. Why do you want to escape anyway? asked Tiger. I thought you liked all those annoying children. I love them, Peggy corrected the cat. That's why I need to get out of the garden, to help them. Tiger sniffed. My motto is every cat for himself. Well, I'm not a cat, said Peggy, staring down on the ground sadly. Of course, she thought. The answer was right under her nose. Dogs might not, might not be good at climbing and jumping, the way cats were, but they were great at digging. She could tunnel her way out of the garden. Peggy ran over to the fence at the back of the garden, squeezing between two bushes, and began to dig. Her paws churned up soil as she tunnelled through the damp, cold earth. Oh, tutted Tiger, Mr Jackson is going to be so cross. You know how proud he is of his garden. He hates it when I do my business in the shrubs. Peggy ignored him and kept digging. Soon there was a mound of earth piled up by the fence. Is the hole big enough yet? wondered Peggy, panting with exhaustion. She tried to get through, but she didn't quite fit. Keep digging, she told herself. Peggy dug and dug. Taking a deep breath, she tried again. She stuck her head into the hole and pushed her furry little body through the tunnel. Snap! Peggy felt her collar break as she burrowed through the narrow tunnel, but she didn't stop. She wriggled through the soil like a worm until, pop, her head emerged on the other side of the fence. Peggy staggered to her feet and shook herself all over to get the dirt off. She'd done it. Looking around nervously, Peggy realised something. She'd never been beyond the garden on her own before. Tiger peered down at her from the top of the fence. Well, what are you waiting for? Peggy glanced back at her house sadly. She remembered what it had felt like to be alone in the world before her family adopted her. Peggy didn't want to leave the home that she loved so much, but she knew she had to find Santa. He would make Chloe happy again, and the rest of the family too. Resisting the urge to go straight back to her garden, Peggy told herself to be brave. She trotted down the alley and out onto the street, her nose to the pavement. She sniffed the ground, following a familiar scent. She walked and walked until, bump, her nose hit a wall. I must be at the school now, Peggy thought. Jumping up, she pressed her nose against the glass to look through the window. To her surprise, she didn't see Chloe or Ruby or any children, but she did see Mum holding a tray with two cups of tea on it. She was bringing it to the table where two ladies wearing gym kit sat eating bacon sandwiches. This wasn't school, it was mum's cafe. 
Peggy's mouth watered as she stared at the sandwiches, but she knew she couldn't stop for a snack. She quickly jumped down from the window before Mum spotted her. There was no time to waste, she was on a mission. She needed to get to the school and speak to the reindeer. Peggy looked from right to left, trying to remember the way they'd walked from the cafe to school on that day of the Christmas fair. It's this way, she decided, setting off down the street. She passed a newsagent, a hair salon and a chemist, but soon the shops gave way to houses. As she walked along, Peggy admired the pretty wreaths decorating the doors. One house even had a huge inflatable snowman on the lawn. When she came to a crossing, Peggy wasn't sure which way to go. She thought for a moment. I'd better turn right, she reasoned, because I want to go the right way. Feeling very clever, she turned right every time she came to a crossing. Soon, all the houses began to look the same to her. Oh wow, thought Peggy, there's another house with a snowman. She stopped and took a closer look. The inflatable snowman had a black top hat and a carrot nose, just like the one she'd seen before. There was a tricycle in the front garden and a red car parked in the drive, just as there, as there had been at the other house. Wait a minute. This was the very same snowman she'd seen before. I've been going round in circles, she suddenly realised. Peggy sniffed the ground. She could smell all sorts of interesting scents, but she couldn't catch even the faintest whiff of her family. Peggy's paws ached and her tummy rumbled. She regretted not eating any breakfast. Exhausted, she plopped down on the edge of the f a front garden for a rest. Face it, she told herself, you're lost. Woof, woof, woof! An enormous Doberman came thundering across the grass, his ears pricked up and his eyes flashing. Get off my lawn! He growled, straining on the long rope that was attached to his spiked collar. Terrified, Peggy leapt to her paws. For a second, she stood, stood frozen, too scared to move. The massive dog bared his sharp teeth, slobber dripping from his jaws, big enough to swallow Peggy in one bite. What are you waiting for? He snarled, lunging forward menacingly. Without looking, Peggy ran straight into the street. Beep, beep, beep! A car swerved out of the way, narrowly missing Peggy. Stupid mutt! The driver shouted out of the window angrily. Peggy raced to the other side of the road and collapsed on the pavement. She began to sob. Do you have a death wish or something? Asked a voice coming from above her. Sniffling. Peggy looked up. A squirrel sat in a tree branch overhead, studying her with beady black eyes. Oh dear, he said sympathetically, scampering down the tree trunk. It can't be as bad as you think it is. Now dry those eyes. He went on, using his fluffy grey tail to wipe away Peggy's tears, and tell Andy what's wrong. I'm lost, wailed Peggy. I was trying to find Chloe's school, but I went the wrong way. What's a school? asked the squirrel. It's where lots of children go to learn and play, explained Peggy. Oh, said Andy. I know where that is. In fact, I was just heading there myself. Want to come with me? Yes, please, yelped Peggy, relief flooding through her. That would be amazing. She scrambled to her feet and hurried after the squirrel, whose tail bobbed ahead of her. Hey, she panted as something occurred to her. I thought squirrels were supposed to be scared of dogs. I saw you run away from that big dog, Andy chuckled, his whiskers twitching. You're about as scary as a butterfly. The squirrel scampered through a set of big iron gates. He headed across the grass to a cluster of trees and scratched his head with his paw. I know I buried some acorns around here a few months ago. Now, where was it? <clears throat> Peggy gazed around her confused. Um, oh sorry, said Andy, I nearly forgot. The school's over there, he said, pointing with one of his paws before bounding off in search of his nuts. Peggy hurried off in the direction Andy had pointed. Soon, she heard the excited shrieks of children playing. But when she got there, her heart sank. 
There were lots of children swinging on swings, spinning on a roundabout and dangling from monkey bars. But this wasn't a school, it was a playground. Andy had taken her to the park. Doggy! cried a little girl, spotting Peggy from the top of the slide. She whooshed down and then ran out of the playground to give Peggy a cuddle. Soon, a cluster of toddlers had gathered around Peggy. She's so cute, said a little boy, feeding Peggy one of his rice cakes. Her face is all wrinkly, giggled a little girl, just like my granny's. She gave Peggy an apple slice. Peggy wagged her tail and enjoyed the attention as the little kids stroked her fur and shared their snacks with her. Soon, her belly was full. I hope Santa Claus brings me a puppy, said the little boy, patting Peggy on the head. Santa, thought Peggy in alarm, suddenly remembering what she was supposed to be doing. She needed to find Holly and Noel, bolting down a final piece of cheesecake sandwich. She wriggled away from the little kids and ran to the park gates. She decided to head in the opposite direction to the one she and Andy had come from. As she walked, she noticed a girl carrying a backpack, just like the one Chloe took to school. I'll follow her, thought Peggy. She's probably going to school. She trotted after the girl. Before long, she turned down a front path and rang the doorbell of a house with a red door. A lady opened the door and gave the girl a hug. Hi, honey, she said. How was school? Uh-oh, thought Peggy. School was over for the day. The gates would be locked. Now she wouldn't be able to ask Holly and Noel for help. This was a disaster. As she trudged along the quiet streets, trying to work out what to do next, Christmas trees glowed from the front rooms of houses she passed. Peggy swallowed hard, trying not to cry as she thought of her own cosy home. Chloe would be getting back from school and finding her gone. Peggy knew her friend would be terribly worried about her. I only left so I could help Chloe, thought Peggy. She glanced up at the sky. It was already beginning to get dark. In the gloomy twilight, Peggy saw something in the distance that made her heart leap. A magnificent reindeer standing on the roof of a house. It must have flown up there. She ran to the house. Excuse me, she called up to the reindeer. The reindeer stayed silent and aloof, not even glancing down at her. Peggy tried again. Hello, I'm hoping that you might be able to help me find Santa Claus. Suddenly, the reindeer lit up and its red nose started to flash. It was just a decoration. Oh no, thought Peggy, watching the glowing reindeer in dismay. How will I ever find Santa now? Peggy sat down on the cold pavement. All she wanted to do was go home, but she had no idea how to get there. Besides, she still had to find Santa. You're not a quitter, Peggy told herself sternly. She thought for a moment. The reindeer handler had said that reindeer come from the North Pole, so that must be where Santa lived too. But which way was north? As she was trying to decide which way to go, Peggy heard a loud crash. It seemed to have come from behind the house. Peggy jumped up in alarm and peeked nervously down the side passage. In the moonlight, she could see two dustbins. One had been knocked over and its contents were strewn all over the ground. Over the rubbish loomed the shadow of a huge, terrifying wolf. Peggy gasped. The wolf's pointy ears twitched as it turned its head to look at her. Peggy saw that it had reddish fur, a black nose and a bushy tail. It was much smaller than its shadow because it wasn't a wolf at all. It was a fox. How do you do? said the fox. I'm Vicky. She dabbed her whiskers daintily with her back, back of her paw and gestured to a pile of rotting eggshells, fish bones and mouldy banana peel. Would you care to join me for supper? There's more than enough to go around. Uh, no thank you, said Peggy. Mum and Dad were always complaining about foxes, but Peggy was, Peggy was surprised. For a wild animal, Vicky seemed very polite. Peggy went over and sat down next to her, trying to ignore the reek of rotten food. 
What are you doing out here at night? asked Vicky. You don't look like a stray. Don't you have a home? Yes, Peggy said sadly. But I can't go back until I found a way to help my family. I understand, said Vicky, nodding. I have three dear little babies of my own. I'd do anything for them. She gestured to a chicken carcass with her paw. Chicken is my favourite, but I'm saving this for the kiddies back in my den. Are you trying to find dinner for your family? No, I'm trying to find Santa Claus, said Peggy. He lives at the North Pole. Have you ever been there? Vicky shook her head. But I do have a distant cousin who lives in the Arctic. I believe that's near the North Pole. Do you know how to get there? Peggy asked eagerly. Hmm, said Vicky, thinking. She glanced up and Peggy followed her gaze. It was a clear night and the stars shone brightly in the sky. We foxes use the stars to guide us on our way, explained Vicky. Do you see that very bright star just underneath the moon? She pointed with her paw. Peggy nodded. That's the North Star. If you follow it, I'm sure you'll find your way to the North Pole. Peggy gazed in wonder at the North Star, twinkling like a diamond against the inky black sky. Thank you very much, she told the fox. You've been so helpful. I suppose I'd better be heading off now. Are you sure you don't want a bite to eat before you go? Asked Vicky, offering Peggy a pile of potato peelings. You've got a long journey ahead of you. Er, uh, no thank you, said Peggy. Save it for your babies. With the North Star lighting her way, Peggy set off for the North Pole. It was bitterly cold and her paws were sore, but Peggy didn't mind. Each step she took was taking her closer to Santa. As she walked, Peggy kept her eyes on the sky. In less than a week's time, Santa Claus would be flying across it on his Christmas Eve journey, delivering presents to all the good boys and girls. Peggy hoped she'd be able to reach the North Pole before then, as she hated the thought of Chloe being unhappy on Christmas Day. She remembered how delighted Chloe, Finn and Ruby had been last year when they'd opened their presents. The evening wore on and the sky grew cloudy, dimming the starlight. Something cold and white landed on Peggy's nose. A snowflake! I must be getting closer to the North Pole, thought Peggy, as snow began to fall, dusting the pavement with fluffy white flakes. Soon, it got harder and harder for Peggy's short legs to trudge through the snow. By now, the sky was too overcast to see the North Star. I can't go any farther, Peggy realised. She climbed onto the doorstep of the nearest house. Shivering, she curled up in a ball and whimpered softly, longing to be snuggled up with Chloe in her warm bed. The door opened. An elderly lady in a fluffy purple dressing gown and slippers stood in the doorway. I thought I heard something, she said, peering down at Peggy through her glasses. Oh, you poor little thing. You'd better come inside. Gratefully, Peggy staggered into the warmth and light. Bending down slowly, the lady picked Peggy up and carried her into the living room, setting her down on the plump sofa in front of a flickering gas fire. The lady wrapped Peggy in a knitted blanket. I'll fix you something to eat while you warm up said the lady, disappearing into the kitchen. Soon, Peggy heard sausages sizzling. Her tummy began to rumble as she realised she hadn't had anything to eat since the playground. When the lady returned, she set a plate of sliced sausages on the floor in front of the fire. Wriggling out from under the blanket, Peggy jumped down and gobbled the sausages up in a few bites, then licked the plate clean. My Charlie used to love sausages too, said the lady. She sighed deeply. He was a beagle. I'd love to get another dog, but my arthritis is too bad for him to manage all the walks. Peggy nuzzled the lady's hand, wanting to say thank you. I'm Sue, said the lady, but what's your name? She felt around Peggy's neck. Hmm, no collar. You're a mystery pup. Now that she'd warmed up and her belly was full, Peggy looked around Sue's living room. By the window, a little artificial Christmas tree sat on a table, its coloured lights flashing. Above the fire, the mantelpiece heaved with framed photographs, 
most showing three children with red hair and freckles. Her knees creaking, Sue lowered herself onto the sofa and picked up a basket of yarn. She patted the seat next to her. Come up here, she told Peggy. I get so lonely on my own. It's nice to have some company for a change. Peggy joined Sue on the sofa as she knitted. Sue chatted to Peggy about her grandchildren. My son lives far away, she explained. I don't get to see the little ones as often as I'd like. Peggy felt sorry for Sue. She loved being part of a big family. With a pang of sadness, she thought about Chloe, Finn and Ruby and hoped they weren't too worried about her. I'm going to visit them soon, continued Sue. I always make them each a Christmas jumper. They've just had a new baby. Sue pointed her knitting needle towards a photo of a chubby baby with a shock of red hair. And they're making her one too. Looking down at Peggy, Sue tapped her chin thoughtfully. Actually, she pulled the jumper over Peggy's head and pushed her front, front paws through the armholes. It's the perfect size for you. Sue rummaged around in her basket and pulled out more wool. You can have that one, she said. There's still a week until Christmas. I've got plenty of time to make another jumper for the baby. Peggy could tell that Sue loved her family as much as she loved hers. It was hard to be apart from the people you loved the most. Will I ever be able to help them? She wondered. Cozy in her new jumper and exhausted from her long day, Peggy felt her eyes begin to grow heavy. Soon, the comforting clickety-clack of Sue's knitting needles lulled her into a deep sleep. In her dreams, an old man dressed in a red suit with a black belt and big black boots appeared. He had a snowy white beard and wore a red hat with a white pom-pom. Ho ho ho, chuckled Santa, holding his round belly. Don't ever give up hope, Peggy. He peered at her through his glasses, his blue eyes twinkling merrily. Remember, Christmas is the most magical time of the year. Peggy woke to the smell of something delicious. Yawning, she stretched her legs and wondered why they felt so sore. And what on earth was she wearing? Had Ruby dressed her up in doll's clothes again? Suddenly, everything came flooding back to her. She wasn't at home, she was at Sue's house. Peggy jumped down from the sofa and wandered into the kitchen. Good morning, Mr. Pup, said Sue cheerfully. She was dressed in a velvety tracksuit and frying bacon on the stove. Peggy looked up, her, up at her with a mournful pleading eyes. Chloe could never resist this look, but would it work on Sue? A moment later, Sue placed a plate heaped with bacon on the floor next to a bowl of water. Yes! Peggy could hardly believe it was all for her. No bacon for me, I'm afraid, said Sue, pouring herself a bowl of bran flakes. My doctor says I need to lower my cholesterol. When Peggy and Sue had finished breakfast, Sue picked up the telephone. I'd better make an appointment with the vet. It's Saturday, but the surgery should be open. The vet will be able to check your microchip and find your owner. No, thought Peggy. As tempting as it was to go home, Peggy knew she couldn't let Sue take her to the vet. Santa Claus had told her not to give up, and she wouldn't. I've got to get out of here, Peggy thought. She went over to the door and pranced around in circles, whining, hoping that Sue would get the hint. Oh, silly me, said Sue. You need to do a piddle. Unlocking the door, she let Peggy into the garden. It was a cold, clear winter's morning. A blanket of snow sparkled in the sunshine, making the garden look like a beautifully iced cake. As soon as she'd finished doing her business, Peggy sprinted across the lawn, the snow crunching under her paws. Come back! cried Sue. But Peggy didn't stop, or even look back. She had run down the pavement until she'd left Sue's house far behind. She felt bad as Sue had been very kind to her, but she needed to find Santa Claus. He was the only one who could help her family. Suddenly, Peggy skidded to a stop. Running along the neatly shoveled pavement, pavement was the very man she was looking for. He looked exactly like he had in her dreams, with a red suit and a hat and a curly white beard. The only difference was that he was wearing trainers instead of black boots. 
Santa! barked Peggy. I need to talk to you. But Santa must not have heard because he ran right past her. Santa, wait! barked Peggy, hurrying after him. For a tubby man, Santa could run surprisingly quickly. Peggy's little legs struggled to keep up with his long strides. She watched his back, which had the number 21 pinned to it, disappear as he ran through some gates. Panting, Peggy hurried after him. Running through the gates, she looked around, but there was no sign of Santa anywhere. Oh no! wailed Peggy in despair. She sat down on the chilly path. She'd come so close, only to fail. Oh, hello again, said Andy the squirrel, hopping over to Peggy across the snow. Are you still looking for the school? Peggy suddenly realised she was in the same park she'd been in yesterday. It looked so different covered in the snow that she hadn't recognised it at first. No, said Peggy, shaking her head. Now I'm searching for Santa Claus. What does he look like? asked Andy. He's got a red suit and a white beard, said Peggy. She sighed. I nearly found him, but he was running too fast and I lost him. Well, you're in luck, said Andy. He pointed with his paw, because he's right over there. Peggy turned round and saw Santa Claus run through the gates. Then another Santa came sprinting into the park. And another one. Peggy stared in disbelief as Santa after Santa jogged past. As they puffed and panted, their breath sent clouds of steam into the cold air. Some were tall and some were short. Some had big bellies while others were lean. A few were wearing headphones and others clutched water bottles. And unless Peggy was mistaken, some of them were ladies. But they were all wearing red hats and suits with numbers pinned to their backs. Stop! Peggy barked, chasing after the pack of Santas. Which one of you is the real Santa Claus? None of the runners even slowed down. In fact, some people in the park were urging them to go even faster. Come on! cheered a lady, wearing, re re wearing reindeer antlers. You can do it! Please help me! yapped Peggy. It's really important! Get lost! shouted one of the Santas angrily. I'm almost at the finishing line! Peggy knew that one couldn't be the real Santa. He was much too grumpy. But Santa had to be somewhere in this pack of red-suited runners. If they wouldn't stop, she'd just have to make them. Taking a deep breath, Peggy pushed past the cheering people, darting through the sea of red legs. She stopped in the middle of the path. Santa! She barked as loud as she could. Whoa! cried a Santa wearing, a, wearing neon green trainers. He swerved to avoid Peggy, but crashed into another Santa. Bump! That Santa crashed into another Santa, and soon there was a pile up on the road. Red hats and white beards flew into the air as the runners tumbled on top of each other and landed in a heap. Some of the Santas picked themselves up and carried on running. A Santa with friendly brown eyes looked down at Peggy. Hey, I know you, he said. He took off his white beard and Peggy recognised Finn's friend Zack, who used to be the guitarist in the band. Zack frowned. What are you doing out here by yourself? A girl wearing snow boots ran up to them. That's Peggy, she cried. Peggy recognised her too. She was Chloe's friend, Ellie. Peggy went missing the other day, Ellie explained to Zack. She gestured with a gloved hand to a nearby tree. Pinned to the trunk was a handmade poster with a picture of Peggy on it. When I saw the posters, I knew I had to help Luke, said Ellie, scooping Peggy up. Chloe must be so upset. Chloe, thought Peggy with a pang. To her surprise, Ellie looked just as worried about Chloe as she felt. That's funny, thought Peggy. I thought she didn't want to be Chloe's friend anymore. Zack nodded. Yeah, Finn will be really worried too. He really loves the pegster. I couldn't help overhearing, said the lady wearing reindeer antlers who had been cheering on the runners. Why don't I give her owners a call? She, sh she took out a mobile phone from her coat pocket and dialed the number on the poster. Uh-oh, thought Peggy. She tried to wriggle out of Ellie's arms, but Ellie held her firmly. No, you don't, she told Peggy. You're not going anywhere except home. I bet everyone's worried sick about you. Peggy felt awful. She wanted to make her family happy, but all she'd done was make them even more upset. She hadn't reached the North Pole. She hadn't even managed to make it out of her own town. 
Her mission had been a hopeless failure. Help, Santa! barked Peggy desperately as the last of the red-suited runners crossed the finishing line. I need a Christmas miracle! Please, use your magic to make Chloe and her family happy again! There she is! Peggy's ears pricked up at the sound of a familiar voice. Peering over Ellie's shoulder, she saw Chloe sprinting towards her, with Finn right behind. Mum and Dad, holding Ruby's hand, were hurrying down the path after them. And they all had huge smiles on their faces. Peggy wriggled so much that Ellie had to put her down. Ears flapping and tail wagging, she ran towards her family. Oh, Peggy! cried Chloe, scooping her up and hugging her tight. We were all so worried about you. Nice outfit, Pegster, said Finn, patting Peggy on the head. My turn, said Ruby, jumping up and down. Chloe bent down, so her little sister could stroke Peggy too. Peggy's heart felt like it was going to burst. Her family weren't angry with her for running away, they just seemed overjoyed to have her back. Thanks so much for finding Peggy, said Mum to the lady with the mobile phone. It's these two you should thank, said the lady, gesturing to Ellie and Zack. Mum suddenly did a double take. Miss Roberts? I didn't recognise you with your reindeer antlers. Ruby looked up from patting Peggy and froze when she recognised the teacher. Miss Roberts smiled. My friend was running in the race, so I thought I'd cheer her on. She crouched down. Is it okay if I stroke Peggy too? Ruby nodded nervously. Miss Roberts tickled Peggy behind the ears and Peggy licked her hand. You're so lucky to have Peggy, said Miss Roberts. I'd love to get a dog, but I live in a flat without a garden. You like animals? asked Ruby shyly. Her teacher nodded. I love animals. I have a cat named Willow. As Ruby told her teacher all about Peggy, runners wearing medals and proud smiles began to make their way out of the park. I'm sorry you didn't get to finish the race, Finn said, Finn said to ja Zack. That's okay, Zack said, shrugging. I did most of it. Besides, some things are more important than getting a medal. He coughed awkwardly. <clears throat> How's the band? Finn shrugged. We still don't have a guitarist. Are you interested? Zack grinned. Sure, playing in a band is a lot more fun than running. The boys exchanged high fives. I think we should change our name, said Finn. What do you think about maximum velocity? That's terrible, thought Peggy. I love it, said Zack. I guess we can take these down now, said Dad, going over to the tree and removing the poster with Peggy's picture on it. <clears throat> they worked though, said Ellie. Chloe smiled at her shyly. Thanks for helping find Peggy. Of course I helped, said Ellie. You're my best friend after all, and always will be. Aww, thought Peggy, as they hugged. While Chloe and Ellie chatted happily, Peggy spotted another little dog over by the playground, a tiny terrier with his shaggy brown hair and a red bow on her head. She strained on the lead, which was held by a girl around Chloe's age. The terrier wagged her tail eagerly, as if she wanted to play. Peggy wandered over to say hello, giving the dog a friendly sniff. Hi, I'm Princess, said the terrier. Don't judge, I didn't choose it. It's nice, said Peggy. And so was Princess. Soon the two dogs were rolling around in the snow, barking and playing. Peggy, cried Chloe, running over. For a second I thought I'd lost you again. She looked at Princess's owner in surprise. Hannah? What are you doing here? Ellie told me about your dog going missing and I wanted to help look for her, said Hannah. I know how upset I'd be if I lost Princess. Chloe crouched down and gave Princess a pat. She's really cute. Thanks, said Hannah, smiling. It looks like she and Peggy are friends already. Do you think we could be friends too? I'd like that, said Chloe, smiling back at her. Linking arms, Chloe, Ellie and Hannah went back to the rest of Chloe's family with Princess and Peggy following behind them. Everyone's invited back to tasty treats on the high street, called Mum. There's a free mince pie for everyone who did the Santa run. An hour later, Mum's cafe was so busy that every single seat was taken and the windows were fogged up with steam. 
Ellie, Chloe and Hannah shared a table, drinking hot chocolates with mounds of whipped cream as princess nod on dog treats. Runners in Santa suits scoffed sandwiches, hungry after their long run. Ruby, who was wearing her teacher's reindeer antlers, sat with Miss Roberts and her friend munching mince pies. Dad and Finn helped Mum serve customers. Peggy jumped down from Chloe's lap and trotted by Dad's heels as he placed a cup of tea in front of an elderly lady. Why, it's you, said Sue, staring at Peggy in astonishment. Mystery pup! Do you know Peggy? asked Dad. She spent last night in my house, explained Sue. I found her shivering on my porch. I took her in and gave her that jumper to wear. Well, that's one mystery solved, said Dad, chuckling. We were wondering where she got her jumper. He beckoned Mum over and introduced Sue. Thank you so much for taking care of Peggy, said Mum. She could have frozen to death out in that cold. Oh, it was no trouble at all, said Sue. I live on my own, so it was nice to have some companionship. Dad nodded. I think Peggy ran away because she was lonely. My wife recently opened this cafe. The kids are all at school now, and I've been really busy with work. No, that's not it, barked Peggy. I was trying to find Santa. But of course, the humans didn't understand her. Well, I know what it's like to be lonely, said Sue. I miss having a dog. So it was lovely to spend time with Mystery Pup. She smiled. I mean Peggy. Yes, said Mum. Dogs always cheer a place up. Suddenly, a thoughtful expression crossed her face. You know, that gives me an idea. People love being around dogs, and most cafes don't allow them. Maybe I should turn this place into a dog-friendly cafe. That's a brilliant idea, said Dad. You could take Peggy to work with you so she doesn't get lonely at home. Peggy wagged her tail. She liked it here in the cafe, surrounded by friendly people and her new friend Princess. I'll definitely come here for a cup of tea if I can get some cuddles with Peggy, said Sue. Peggy rubbed against Sue's leg, happy to oblige. I go running with my Labrador every morning, said one of the Santas overhearing. I'd love to come here with him afterwards. You should change the cafe's names to Bones and Scones, suggested Zack through a mouthful of mince pies. No, I've got a better idea, said Finn. You can call it Pups and Cups. I love it, said Mum. And Peggy did too. Back at home that night, they all decorated the Christmas tree together. We've all been so busy, said Mum, hanging a shiny Santa-shaped bobble on a branch, that we forgot the true meaning of Christmas. Presents? asked Ruby. No, silly, said Dad, tossing her hair. Family. Too bad it took losing Peggy to make us realise that, said Finn. Chloe picked Peggy up and hugged her. Don't ever leave us again, Peggy. We missed you so much when you were gone. But we got her back, said Ruby, putting her reindeer antlers on Peggy and giving her a kiss. Mum took a picture of the children and Peggy. Lovely. That can be our family Christmas card. Aww, said Chloe, smiling. Peggy looks so cute as a reindeer. But Peggy knew she didn't need to become a reindeer anymore. Her family loved her just as she was. Looking around at their beaming faces, Peggy let out a howl of joy. Thank you, Santa, she thought, watching the Santa-shaped ornament twinkle merrily in the fairy lights. His Christmas magic had worked. The people she loved most in the whole world were happy again, and she was safely back at home with them. It wasn't the 25th of December yet, but Peggy had everything she wanted for Christmas already. The End <laughs>